Hello, world and beautiful people. Welcome to Circus Stream's Hide and Seek Master AR Occlusions Workshop and Webinar. Happy Thursday, maybe even Friday, depending on where you are tuning in from. But uh, before I do continue along, I would like to do a quick AV audio visual check. So if you can let me know in the chat box there where my Kyle or my colleague Kyle had commented and Vlad, can you hear me and see me? Give me a yes, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and see me before I continue on. Karen, yes, another Kyle, Ben, John, Ross, hear me and see me. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for letting me know. Um, so before I do continue on, a few things that I wanted to mention here. As you all see there, there is a chat box and tab. Feel free to chat amongst yourselves. Toss in your LinkedIn profiles, network chat, comment, whatever you would like to do. There is a questions tab as well beside that chat tab there. Uh, if you have any questions, please toss them into the questions tab. It allows us to really track what hasn't been answered, really get to them throughout the presentation, but also at the end of this presentation, we will have a Q&A session. It helps us really track what we didn't answer and what to get to so we don't really miss anything. Now, beside the questions tab, there is also a polls tab. Now, I'll be tossing in polls throughout this presentation just to gauge the experience of the audience, see what headsets or devices you may own. Uh, it helps us really tailor the technical portion of this presentation and you know how much time we need to spend on the beginner stuff or maybe just get into the advanced stuff right away there. But essentially, I'm going to take about five, 10 minutes here to introduce you all who are new to us, who we are and what we do here at Circus Stream. Then I'll pass it off to my colleague, Nakisa, We'll get into the AR occlusions side of things. I'll come back, wrap it up, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. So about five, 10 minute intro, 30 to 45 minute AR occlusion piece, and then five minute wrap up and Q&A session at the very end. But without further ado, let's continue on. So my name is Stefan and I am on the education team here at Circus Stream. I have over six years of experience in the tech industry, working with travel IT companies, uh, learning management system providers, ERP and business integration platforms, and now in the beautiful world of augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. Now, a little fun fact about myself, and I do see David mentioned it in the chat here. I was a member of Water Polo Canada. I trained with the 2008 Beijing Olympic team. I was only like 14 years old at the time or something like that. So I didn't get to go to the Olympics, but a great experience nonetheless. Met a lot of cool people and heard some great stories coming out of the Olympics there. Now, today it's an honor and a pleasure to be joined by Nakisa Donnelly. Nakisa is our instructor and VRAR developer here at Circus Stream. She's a professional in almost all things AR, specifically for the HoloLens and Magic Leap as well. Very fluent in, the, in those two devices has over three years of XR development and instruction uh, teaching experience. She's taught hundreds of people on how to create their own VR and AR projects and applications. There she is in the chat there. And fun fact icebreaker about Nakisa here. She's occasionally part of a circus, uh, does a lot of cool tricks. And um, I'm sure she might be able to share something about that later on. But I'm sure you'll also hear a lot of puns coming from Nakisa today. Now, who we are and what do we do here at Circus Stream? Well, Circus Stream is a team of about 20 people coming from all different backgrounds and industries, either from software engineering, from communication, from sports, uh, engineering, industrial, manufacturing, you name it. We've come from all these different backgrounds and now joined together to help promote this technology and, and virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, our headquarters are based out of Calgary, Alberta. That's where I myself am located. Uh, most of our other colleagues are also in North America, Toronto, Vancouver, throughout the US, Seattle, Los Angeles, uh, colleagues in South America as well, and then in Europe and Asia. But I do want to take this time and ask you all in the chat, where are you tuning in from? Let me know in the chat where you're currently located. As I mentioned, I myself am in Calgary. I have my colleagues backstage in Toronto, Nikisa's in Calgary as well. Uh, but we got Ben here from New York. We've got Kyle Brown from Calgary, Evan from Calgary as well. Lots of Calgarians here. Marcus from Germany, Jack from Night City. Uh, well, let's see what we got here. Some Montreal, Daytona Beach, Florida, Los Angeles, Malaysia, 
uh columbia this is cali columbia okay okay i thought it was california here uh usa so uh lots of north americans some people tuning in internationally and abroad for those of you who are let's say in europe or in asia we are recording this workshop and webinar and we're sending it out to everyone who had registered so if you do need to go have dinner if you need to sleep you get getting caught up with work in the evenings maybe you're waking up in the morning right now don't worry we will send you the recording for you to follow along later so um a little bit more about circus stream so circus stream is a unity certified training partner and training partners are approved based on their expertise focus on quality education and commitment to providing the highest level of training available now circus stream is also an official channel partner with unity and that means we deliver training and application development services in the architecture, engineering and construction, automotive, transportation, and manufacturing markets. Now there's three things that we do here at Circus Stream. The first, the biggest, our bread and butter is education and training. And these are just some of the people and professionals we've had the pleasure join us and take one of the courses that we have here at Circus Stream, helping them learn how to build VR and AR projects, something they're interested in, implement it back at work, really all different kinds of interests that we've tailored to. Now, typically we do this through uh, two main ways, uh, our XR development with Unity course or our XR project accelerator course. Uh, one is 10 weeks long, one is eight weeks. The 10 week can be considered beginner friendly, whereas the eight week is a little more advanced. And I'll get onto that a little later on. But what differentiates us from maybe some of the other providers out there for AR and VR education? Well, it's our one-on-one -on -one support and mentorship where we help build something alongside you over the time with us in the course, one-on-one -on -one live support and mentorship, uh, helping you design something for your portfolio, bring it back to work, show off to friends, family, whatever it may be. Uh, you are with us throughout the entire process uh, with that one-on-one -on -one support. Now, we do also have a bunch of different courses that we offer, more so shorter courses and uh, specific to certain topics. So if you're interested in checking those out, check out our website. Uh, but essentially it covers, goes from C-sharp scripting to XR design, uh, quest development, as well as the HoloLens development and foundations as well. So if you're interested in something more specific and not to get a general idea, I'd suggest taking a look at some of these shorter courses here. Now, the second thing that we do here at Circus Stream alongside education and training is content creation and consultation. So uh, all of our instructors are current AR and VR developers like Nikisa. And that means that they're working with companies that we partner with to create VR, AR projects and apps. So everything that our instructors like Nikisa are doing out there working with these other companies, they're bringing back into our courses recycling it so everything that you're learning is up to date relevant material applicable to today's work uh, the third thing that we do here at circus stream alongside the education and training as well as content creation and app development is our xr platform that we launched in the winter of last year and just briefly it allows you to take these ar vr projects you have host them in one single space scale distribute and manage those projects onto the platform but you can also track measure and analyze learning activities that people are doing within these experiences here but now that you've learned a little bit about us what are you all here today for what are you going to learn well today we'll learn how to set up an ar project in unity 3d then we'll go on to how to show and hide objects in the simple hide and seek game that we'll be putting together now we'll also cover the fundamentals of understanding uh AR occlusions theory, best practices on how to use AR occlusions in your project, and how to use AR foundation with Unity for occlusion-oriented projects. But I do want to ask you all who are currently tuned in to the workshop and webinar, how much experience with Unity do you have? I'm just going to toss in a poll and publish a poll here. Check out the polls tab. Let me know on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being never heard of Unity. 10 being that you're the Chuck Norris of, of Unity. Maybe you can teach some of our courses here. How experienced are you with Unity? So I'm just looking at the responses here. 
Uh, you know what? It, it's quite balanced, though we have quite a decent amount of beginners. There are quite a decent amount of people who are quite experienced with Unity. Helps us to know how to continue on with the occlusions piece. Thank you. For those of you who said zero or one, what is Unity? Well, Unity is a free 3D development engine for building games, simulations, and experiences. It's the easiest way to begin making apps for XR. Now, XR stands for extended reality, and it's an umbrella term that encompasses and captures both VR and AR, virtual reality and augmented reality. You can't even include mixed reality MR under the XR umbrella as well. Now, how does one actually go about creating their own AR projects, maybe keeping in mind the occlusions that we will cover? Well, you have an idea, that little light bulb to the left, and you bring your idea into a creation engine like Unity. That's where you're going to create your project, optimize it. And once it's kind of polished up, you're going to use an SDK and push it out to a headset or device that you had wanted to create it for. So again, you have an idea, you create it in an engine like Unity, you push it out with an SDK to a headset or device that you want to create it for. And voila, you've got your own AR or VR project created. Now, today is an introduction to AR occlusions. And I do want to take this time to invite my colleague Nakisa onto the stage here. But some of you may be asking yourselves in the meantime, what is occlusion? Well, occlusion commonly refers to objects blocking other objects located behind them from a given viewpoint. So in augmented reality, occlusion is essential for experiences to be immersive virtual objects should be displayed only where there are no physical objects between them and the camera. But, you know, unfortunately, this important feature is missing in many of today's mobile AR applications, or at least not done as well as they could be. So today, I hope Nakisa will be able to take it away and, and show you all a little bit more about AR occlusions, how to work with it, how to get it set up and going. So I will take this time to invite Nakisa onto the stage. Uh, Nikisa, if you're there, feel free to join me. But in the meantime, I'm going to check if there are any questions in the questions tab. Nothing there. So all of you, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Toss them into the questions tab. Helps us really gauge what hasn't been answered there. But Nikisa, thank you so much for joining. It's great to have you again. A pleasure and an honor. You're all in great hands with Nikisa. Uh, she'll be taking about 30, 45 minutes to go through this piece. We'll wrap it up and then get back to the Q&A session at the very end. Take it away, Nikisa. Awesome. Thank you so much. So <laughs> always with some fun statement. Um, so first off, uh, maybe like show of emojis in the chat. Uh, if <laughs> there's my little pop on there. Um, if you can see and hear me really, really quickly. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, cool. Nakita, hi, we have very similar names. Okay, so everyone can see my screen here. This is a Unity project that's already hi. set up. <laughs> that's my dog, his name is Cash, as in memory. Uh, hi, Karen, yes, David, there will be a GitHub repository for all the things exactly, Cash. <laughs> Not to be confused with Cash Money, um, actually kind of sort of how it's spelled, but um, he was my dog and I decided. <laughs> so there are many places, maybe not trees. <laughs> yeah, or Johnny Cash. Who remembers Johnny? Um, so yes, as, as Steph has explained, occlusion is the process of hiding objects but behind other objects. So what happens in like the virtual world is that uh, from your camera's perspective, somewhere in here with your Unity project here, let's take a look. Let's actually go to the sample scene. And I'll just explain just a little bit more here. So occlusion, as you can see with our camera here, we have these white lines coming out from our camera. Now who can tell me what these white lines are for all of your all of the, the Unity experts in here. Huh? Huh? 
It's not cash money. Come on, guys. It is your field of view. So these white lines denote your field of view here. So if we go a little bit closer, and let's actually get rid of this uh, irritating gizmo there. You don't need to see that. Ah, there we go. So we have this little box right here. What is this? Pop quiz. What is this? What's this right there? Near sight. Yes. Yes, yes, precisely. So this is something called a clipping plane. This is our near clipping plane, and it says right here. This is where things begin to stop rendering because it's too close to your face or too close to your um, camera viewpoint game object there. Now our far is set to 1,000, so that is then we can take um, we can take one Unity unit to be uh, equal or equal to one meter in real life, <laughs> right? Yes, hi, hello, welcome to my personal space. <laughs> so one unity unit can be taken as one meter in the real world and uh, that is in metric units. So I um, make no apologies for, you know, all of you Americans out there, just, just convert, just convert to metric, you know. Dead disco, <laughs> just a great song. Um, so this is this is what where our camera can see right here. Right, right. Uh, so when we talk about occlusion, that is like having a cube somewhere here, right? I'm going to bring this game view over here so we can see um, with our game view right about here. We have a cube, and as we move it closer and closer and closer, eventually it'll hit that near, <laughs> a near clipping plane. And if I get closer, it'll stop rendering. Yeah, right about there. There it is. So now, if we take a look at our camera, we can see that it is now past that little viewing plane. So now it's being occluded. So if we have a cube here, and then let's say we have a sphere right about there. Let's move this over here and move it here. So now what's happening is that our cube is being occluded by this sphere. Now the way that this is happening is it's basically calculations are performed in your viewpoint to determine pixel by pixel whether or not something needs to be drawn or rendered to the view. Right? Does that make sense so far? We're not seeing this part of the cube here because the sphere is being rendered first. Perfect. So when we are talking, <laughs> the boring sphere. So when we're talking about this in AR, and I'm using an Android phone here, so we're gonna be using um, AR Core's depth API. So it's depth API takes images from different angles and compares the distances from one pixel as the user moves their phone to another pixel to sort of process depth. Now this depth surface can be understood by a camera. Now only certain cameras have this capability. Like if you have an older pixel phone or like an older Android phone, it doesn't have the same depth camera that we have here. So you won't be able to use occlusion in the same way. Now in the newer iPhones, you also have that depth uh, API and <laughs> don't think it'll work there. <laughs> so in your newer uh, iPhone cameras, you also have LiDAR and, and stuff like that. So this is sort of the basis that we're going to work with when we're dealing with occlusion and hiding objects like around a desk or around a chair that I'm sitting on or around a really lazy dog that really needs attention and love <laughs> because he remembers it. <laughs> so this is what we're going to be doing today. Um, so I don't, I'm just gonna uh, save my scene here by hitting Control or Command S, and then I'm going to go into this scene that I've called Hide and Seek. And this is what we have right about here. Yeah, let's just double click on this here. So the way that I've set this up is that we have 
a canvas here that has a button right here that'll change the quality of your occlusion. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Number one, what we have to do is we have to get something, get a game object into the scene. So what we're gonna do there is we're just gonna tap on a screen to place a prefab. Now, before we do anything like that, your occlusion is going to be handled by something called an AR occlusion manager. And that is actually going to be attached to your camera, AR camera. Now, before everything, before you wanna like set up a scene, you need two things in your scene to actually have it AR capable. You need an AR session origin and an AR session. <laughs> yes, you need a camera. Now these things come from your AR foundation package. So this step is a very, very important step, which I've already done um, for this project. But I'm just gonna go to my windows and package manager, and let's take a look at which packages that I've actually have installed here. So right away, I have my AR foundation. Yeah, totally free. It's totally free. <laughs> so I have my AR foundation package installed, and it's a version 4.1.0. I find this to be a, a more stable version instead of like 4.1.1. Um, but you can totally install that as well. Now, when you are installing a certain package with a certain preview number, a version number, you need to install either AR Core or AR Kit of the same number. So in AR Core, you'll see that the version I've installed here is also version 4.1.0. Make sense? Same thing. Same thing, right? Right? Totally. <laughs> yep. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. So you have all these things installed and you are ready to go. Now, along with installing that, you also get this AR subsystems. This has a lot of stuff like plane tracking, all the things, all the components that are necessary to sort of like under the hood do all the AR stuff. Um, so when you have these things installed, you can just tell them to do the thing and they'll do the thing. <laughs> I'm going through this very, very quickly. So if you need me to slow down, just say like, hey, you're giving me anxiety. You know, sometimes I think I struggle with anxiety, but it actually comes quite easily to me. Probably, probably because of the coffee bean juice. So once you have those things installed, we're gonna go through, <laughs> pulse power. We are gonna go through some build settings because I have not set that up yet. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna walk you guys through the build process. We're gonna go to my build settings and I'm gonna to switch to my Android build settings here. And I have my texture compression and look at that, it already has, it's already going to detect my Samsung phone that's in it, plugged in by USB. That'll be important uh, later on when I actually uh, build onto my phone here. Very important next is that when we are building something, we actually need a scene to build. The scene is your viewpoint into the world that you're building and you need the scene um, to do anything, really. So I'm gonna click on this button called Add Open Scenes and then I'll add my scene Hide and Seek. And then I'm just going to switch my platform there. And this might take a little bit long or a little bit, a little while, but that's okay. We can just, or not. Wow, nope. Still going, still going. Sort of, maybe maybe it procrastinates a little bit. Some of my uh, some of my teachers told me that I would never amount to anything because of my procrastination. But you know what? I said, you know what? You just wait. You know, it might, it works at the speed of electricity. You know, I think it's fine. I don't think, I don't think electricity needs any more caffeine. 
<laughs> Good to see you, Jose. <laughs> Rosie Bean Potion of Dexterity. <laughs> For my finger dexterity, type all the things all at once. Who knows if it makes sense. So it looks like that um, my build settings have switched over to my Android. And so now I'm going to take a look at my player settings. And my player settings are, well, everything that I need for my player to do the thing. And so let's take a closer look at the other settings. So my graphics API Vulkan, Vulkan is no bueno. Vulkan will not work for an Android phone. So you know what, we could just get rid of that. Click on that and click on that little minus icon to subtract that. <laughs> Gotta get those bananas. So then the other thing that we need is that we can uncheck multi-threaded rendering. On some phones, this doesn't work. No Vulkan for iOS either. You usually need an OpenGL uh, S3 or, or whichever one. I think, oh, I can't remember what it is for iOS, but it's a, a little bit different there too. So we uncheck multi-threaded rendering. Now, this is a step that you don't necessarily have to do for iOS, um, but usually it's, it's unchecked multi-threaded. The next thing that we're going to do is change the minimum API level there. And actually, you know what? To make things super, super clear about where I'm pointing. Boom! Yellow. So we have a minimum API level for your Android phone. Now, I'm going to set this to about uh, level 25, API level 25, with it, which is Nugget. A uh, lovely little Nugget there, like little nuggets of knowledge. So your minimum level uh, of API, it's set to 7.1 or level 25 because this is the API that actually has your AR capabilities, that actually has like your phone that is actually AR capable. And then we want like the highest API level here. Um, if you don't have this uh, installed here, there is something else that you need to do you need to check in your installs, and this is a very important step, in your installs for your Unity, you need to make sure in your add modules that under Android build support, you have your SDK and NDK and OpenJDK installed here. The you absolutely, hi puppy. So you absolutely need these things to actually build onto your phone. That's my dog. He loves attention. I've created a monster. If you don't have these installed here, you can go to <laughs> you can go to your um, what's it Android Studio and set these things in. <laughs> we'll just give him a minute. Let's, let's just give him a minute. Oh, he's so sad. He gets love every every hour, and he still wants more. A Scooby snack? You want a Scooby snack? You guys are enablers. He's gonna become a little sausage dog. All because, all because of you guys. So you have to make sure that your NDK and JDK and all that, all that stuff is installed via your Unity Hub. And once you have that, you are good to go. Dog. Well, you know. In the summer, you know, my dog is also a hot dog. <laughs> so by AR packages, uh, do you mean your AR foundation? Yes, all righty. So in your AR foundation, that's at your Windows and your package manager. Let's close this. And in, under your package manager, you can click on the advanced and also show preview packages. Once you have that, you are also going to look in the Unity registry here, not in project or my assets, it's the Unity registry. And then you're going to look for your AR foundation. So if you're building for iOS, you're gonna also install your AR kit. 
if you're building for Android, do you want your AR core? Making sense? Make a lot of sense? Making sense? Yeah. Okay. So we have that. And we also need to do some more player settings. Let's take a look at our player settings again. So we have the nugget and we have the target API level, which is the highest installed. <laughs> a job page. No, but I might need a band aid. <laughs> so we have project settings, uh, and that's all done. We should be ready to go and ready to build on that stuff there. So let's take a look at what I've done here. And uh, so we have our AR session origin and our AR session in our hierarchy. To create these things, it's just a right click, go into XR and your AR session origin and AR session. Those are the two things that you need for AR in your C. So you, let's take a look at your AR session. Your AR session is a thing that actually starts like your AR foundation API and grabs all of the information from your camera right here. Now your AR session origin is of particular interest because when we're dealing with the scenes here, you're dealing with what Unity expects the origin of the world to be. We always need a reference point, and that reference point is at zero, zero, and zero, the origin of the world. So when it comes to AR, because we are out in the real world, we don't really know what the origin is anymore. Like, what is the origin in the first place? Is it Earth's core? Is it the sun, you know, with our solar system? Or is it the center of the universe? We don't know. Maybe it's the restaurant at the end of the universe. You know, just remember to bring your towel. So the AR session origin, this is the thing that makes sure that like, oh, whoa, we don't really, right? <laughs> oh, I could totally use an ear fish. Babel fish, it's a babel fish. So your AR session origin is the only is, is the thing that makes sure that the origin of this project, the origin of this scene is always going to be where your phone is. So if we expand this, we have an AR camera. And so there's going to be a bunch of matrix operations that make sure that the origin of your world in Unity will be the phone. So if you look at your AR camera here and in the inspector, let's just expand that here. We have an AR pose driver. So this is the thing that makes sure that this camera is tracking the position and rotation of your phone. Elena, nice to see you. So on your camera as well, because it's taking data from your camera, from your depth API, it needs an AR occlusion manager. Now this AR occlusion manager, this, um, it has both iOS and Android settings. Now your human segmentation, this is specifically for iOS. So we're not gonna touch this right now for Android because well, it's iOS and Apple can be not so delicious anymore. It can be a little rotten. Um, so your environmental depth API is something that we're going to be fiddling around with right here. Now, we have another script here that's an AR occlusion quality changer. So what this script does, let's right click and edit script. This script will just toggle your environmental depth so that it's either your fastest or your medium or your best or your disabled. So we'll be able to see like the quality of this um, occlusion that we have on our phone. And this is sort of what it looks like. Um, if you've taken any sort of uh, classes with us, you'll recognize, or you know, any sort of development in Unity, you'll recognize this lovely little pattern instance. And uh, it's a static, public static, um, class here. 
So because it's inheriting for mono behavior, it has to be live on a game object and blah, 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 blah. You have your, <laughs> you have your public void. Don't worry if this sounds like gibberish. Uh, you can just uh, email us some questions and um, all of your questions will be answered in due time. And we have all of these things here. So this is the script that will change the quality of occlusion once we call this public void, because we have we have lovely little four references here. And you can take a dive or deep into these scripts once you have that GitHub repository. And this is on the AR camera. Make sense? Make sense. Making bacon? Are you shaking bacon? I know my dog loves bacon. Hey, that's <laughs> cool. So in order to call that method on that button, we, what method on the script, not the button, we need a button. <laughs> and that is on our UI canvas here in the hierarchy. So here we have a text right at the top and this will tell us whether or not we've selected that thing that we're going to be playing around with, um, whether or not we've found the, the occlusion manager script. The occlusion manager script is from AR foundation. It's from the Unity package. Now, this GitHub repository, it's not live yet, and it will be after the, um, the workshop, so don't fret your pretty little head. You will have it and then you'll, you'll play around with it in due time. Now let's take a look at this button here. This button, on click, this is a Unity event. So whenever we click this button, we are going to call that occlusion manager, occlusion UI manager, and it'll call that toggle quality. So let's take a look at that uh, script here that's on my occlusion UI manager. Now this is also a static instance. And what we have is that we have that uh, public void toggle quality. Now, what this is doing is calling that occlusion quality manager, that static instance, and getting that current depth mode, and then just toggling it. It's switching that depth mode. So it'll be disabled, the fastest, medium, or best. Those options that we have in our AR occlusion manager. And then of course, it's just going to update the text so that it'll say what the new quality is. Yes, precisely, David. It is a singleton instance. Now there are many ways that you can do a singleton instance, a singleton instance, and you can make this a little bit uh, more skookum, as you would know. Skookum is a Canadian term because that's what Canadians say. There's just so many languages happening today. Oh, God. <laughs> Not in Quebec. Uh, unfortunately, my Spanish is, is much better than my French um, for some reason. <laughs> my English is not even good. I, do, I, I speak computer languages, not human languages. So that is the gist of the occlusion UI manager. And we have that button here that'll change the uh, text of your button to show what quality, or what the occlusion quality is. Make sense? So that is all the UI setup. Is it best to place that in a dedicated manager? Yes. Usually your managers are separate game objects, but I was lazy. <laughs> now the next step is the actual hide and seek game object that we are going to be using. So I'm going to move this game tab over here and go to the scene view. One manager to rule them all. Yes. Yes, Gandalf. I was going to use a little miniature Frodo because, you know, he has to hide. Um, but I settled for a robot sphere. Now let's take a look at our robot sphere and let's see what he's made up. 
your RobotSphere um, is a free asset uh, in the Unity Asset Store, and I've just done some stuff to it. And we see that we have a little sphere here, and he has a little box collider around him there. And he also has two AR Occlusion Manager. Ah, <laughs> but will he be headless? Uh, so your AR, mm, make sure to install either AR Core or AR Kit Jack for whichever platform that you're developing on. So here in my Windows uh, Package Manager, I also have AR Core installed, which is the same version as my AR Foundation. If I'm going a little bit fast here, don't worry. You'll have a recording sent to you after this workshop where you can listen to all my terrible plans over and over and over again and you know, enjoy. <laughs> Try not to be as salty as the ocean, though. <laughs> so we have a little robot sphere, a little headless BBA, but is he really headless? Your Kate is 3.1, AR Foundation is 3.16. You might want to update your foundation to 3.18 if that is available. Usually you want these two packages to be uh, together or the same versions. So let's take a look at some of the animations that uh, come with this little headless BBA because you'll see, boom, he's not headless. And he has some cute, some cute little eyes right over there. Oh, he's so cute. Almost as cute as my dog. So this is our little BB and he'll animate when, when he, you know, opens up. <laughs> It just reminds me of Obi-Wan. He's like, hello there to General Grievous. <laughs> so he has an animator on him and he also has two scripts. So this placed object script, this is just to figure out whether or not we have selected him, whether we are not, whether or not we have tapped him through our phone. And that whole mechanic of how we are tapping him and how we are... <laughs> and how we are placing him in the scene. I'll go over that in due time. But this little script is on our little guy. He needs a name. He needs a name, though, and I don't really know. Maybe he's just a droid, because that's all he ever will be. So we also have a robot occlusion controller. Well, I pressed the wrong one. A robot occlusion controller here. I'm going to edit this script and let you guys know what cash money and let you guys know what the script is doing. So the script is just saying that like on enable, he's going to open up. And then if he has been selected, he is going to clam up like a shell. Otherwise he will remain open. And that is, that's the, that's the most logic that's on this guy. That's on uh, <laughs> Nucky. I like that. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. And that's just purely what this guy is going to do. Now, the meat of everything, where everything comes together, is on our, our AR session origin. So the AR session origin, it has our AR session origin script here. It has an AR plane manager and an AR raycast manager. So our AR plane manager is the component that recognizes any sort of planes that are on our, or that, uh, that it recognizes in the environment. And so we don't have a plane prefab, so we won't see the planes itself because I find it to be a little nauseous. Um, but you can certainly have a prefab in there. And so this detection mode is horizontal. So it'll only detect horizontal planes. It'll detect the floor. It'll detect like a desk, um, any sort of any sort of things like that. And then the next component is an AR Raycast manager. Our AR Raycast manager is the thing that shoots rays out from our phone into the real world, so we can actually detect 
whether or not we are looking at a plane. And this AR Raycast Manager is the thing that we're going to use to figure out where we're going to instantiate our little nakidoid. Nakioid? Nakioid. Make sense so far? No? Doesn't make any sense? Yes, precisely. Precisely. It's to make sure that you're headed in the right direction. Because of course you are. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so let's take a look at the meat of uh, what this thing is going to do. And it's in this tap to place script. So let's open up and let's see what that is doing. Yeah, let's just, uh, where is my, it, it. there we go, okay. So we are using AR Foundation and AR Subsystems. So what we need to do is we just need to cast a ray out from our phone and wherever we are tapping on the screen, we're just going to instantiate a prefab. That is prefab is going to be the Troid. And then we have a reference to whatever it is that we have instantiated. And then we have the touch position of our hands and a pose. And of course the Raycast manager, because we need access to that thing um, that's doing the, doing the shooting. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. We have a void update and our update is called, you know, every frame per second. So if I have, uh, if I have like 90 frames per second or 120 frames per second, how many times is my update going to be called this function? For, for all of you, uh, seven out of 10 Unity developers, or eight out of 10. Yes, frame rate. If I have a frame rate of 120 and my update is called every frame, how many times is my update going to be called per frame? It's going to be called exactly, Danny. Danny E. 10 points for Hufflepuff. Actually, I don't know if you're Hufflepuff. You might be Slytherin for all I know. Slytherins are pretty good. I like Slytherins. They're just, you know, cunning. So we have in the update, every update, we're going to see if we have touched on the screen. So that's input.touch. Count is greater than zero. So that means we're touching the thing. And then we're going to save that touch position in an X and Y coordinate because touch position is a what type of data? It is a vector two. Double tap would be, well, it would be, yes. So the first touch that we're getting, it would be input.getTouch0. That's the first touch. So a double tap, that would be touch one. You are correct, David. And then we're going to see if, you know, that touch.phase, if the phase, if we just began to tap on the screen. And then what we're going to do, firstly, the fir very first thing that we're going to check for is if we have actually hit a game object if we've hit the droid. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to use a regular Unity physics raycast. So we're going to declare a ray that's from the AR camera uh, screen to point ray in that touch position. So we're going to shoot a ray, a physics ray from Unity from a phone to hit a digital object if it's there. And that is if we have that placed object. Remember that script that's uh, selected or not selected or that sort of thing? Yeah, I remember? Remember that one? Right, it makes sense. It makes sense. So then once we have hit that droid, we're going to see we're going to see that it's selected and then we're going to change the um, 
UI instance. We're going to change that uh, text right up there, this text to be true because, you know, we've selected it. So, and then once we do, we have a coroutine. We have, we're starting a coroutine timed position and we're passing in some parameters here. So let's take a look at what this coroutine is doing. This coroutine is first going to deselect the object because now we're done. We're done with it. <laughs> oh, you should have been here for the uh, the Space Invaders on the HoloLens because that was that was real fun. Instantiated all these little guys that were going towards you. You had to like pinch, you had to pinch to explode. So in that case, you would have like a little army. <laughs> ah, yes, but you see, this is for occlusion. This is hide and seek. So for the timed position, what we're going to do is we are going to update the text. And then what we're going to do is we are going to move the guy. We're going to move him to a new position. Now we're going to pick a random number in the X direction, which is a random range from negative one to one. So it'll be at most one meter, <laughs> at most one meter away from where the origin of the world is, which would be my phone. And then we're going to keep him at the same level, the Y position, because I want it to be on the floor. And then we're going to move him in some random Z direction around me. Now you can fiddle with these numbers as well. Uh, I find that if it's if it's more than one, I I just can't find him. I am definitely not a Hufflepuff. I can't find anything, especially when I'm trying to find it. And this is this is where the hide and seek comes into play here. So once we start that coroutine, if we have selected him, then we'll do the thing. And otherwise, you know, selection is false. Now then, then we have, after that, we are going to see whether or not we have actually instantiated the prefab in the first place. And so this is a little redundant here because I've already added this namespace. We can just actually like, there we go, control S. Control our command S to save. And so here we are using our AR Raycast manager because now we're trying to detect that plane. We're going to instantiate an object on the plane that the AR plane manager has detected. And that is here. That is this meet. So then we're going to see, do we have that object? If we do or if we don't, then we're going to instantiate it. But if we already have that instantiated, we're not going to instantiate another one because we're not, we, we don't want an army of these things. That would be a little overwhelming. That would be totally overwhelming. And that is the meat of the tap to place. So let's see. On the air session origin, that tap to place, we have that place prefab, that open field there where I've dragged my robot sphere into right there. And then we have the AR camera which is right there. And then we're going to go to our build settings. And then I am going to, okay, great. I'm going to refresh and see whether or not I can, there it is, my device. And now I'm going to try building it. And if all goes well, we'll have a hide and seek game on our phone. So let's do build and run. And I'm going to create a new folder builds, go into there, and I'm going to rename my uh, APK as hide and seek. Image in a heap would be proud. And now every single person in this workshop is singing hide and seek. <laughs> I make no apologies. It's a great song. You know, because of um, 
so some I was coming up with some business ideas uh, because some people <laughs> you were not prepared. <laughs> I was trying to come up with some business ideas, um, and one of my friends was like, "What if we like make a sword building business?" And I was like, "You know what? You make some really good points." <laughs> just wait for that to build oh there it is okay so it is now on my phone let's see Or not. Seems like my phone is having some trouble there. Now what? That is off. Why did it not do the thing? Let's check our build settings again. Because that was the compression method is there. Let's take a look at other the other things. Okay, let's take a look at our player settings. I did not. So the color space is supposed to be gamma. And that is perfectly fine. Well, multi-threaded rendering is something that you could do. And then let's do static batching right there. Yeah, that's fine. Low quality there. And there, and then we have that. And then let's do the nugget and then the highest installed there. And we have mono.net standard. And let's see, let's see. The target architecture is ARM version 7. ARM 64 is something that you would check for a hollow lens. And then let's do, let's see, let's see. Let's check our XR settings there. And let's see, AR core is supported. That should be fine. Right there. Okay. Okay, let's build it again. And let's do that one. Save, replace yes. That should be fine. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I will mirror this in a minute. So the way that this thing mirrors is um, in order to build onto my phone here, uh, this A power mirror has to be disabled. So I'll just, that looks great. So that is done. And let's see. Ah, there it is. There it is. There she goes. Oh, hold on one second. Hold on. Let me show you guys. Let's do this. Let's just put that there. Give it some time to think. And let's do start now. Well, out. Hey, there we go. All righty. So let's take a look. Let's take a look. I'm going to go to my Unity. There it is. Okay, so there's the pup. Hi, puppy. Oh, hey. And let's see. Okay, so let's do, let's put it, uh, <laughs> you can see that he's destroyed a little something, something. So let's give it some time to think, and then let's do that. Or some other... You can think sometimes it takes a minute to recognize a plane. <laughs> and da, 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 or not. Okay, hold on. Let's restart that again. And let's do occlusion. Made with unity. 
Okay, give it some time to think. Three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Hi, puppy. There it is. Aye. Okay. So there is the little BB. So let's change the quality of occlusion to best. And let's take a look. There we go. So you can see that now it's being occluded by my chair, like so. And he is open right there. So you can change the quality to disabled. Oh, where did you go? And then fastest. Oh, I think I tapped on him. Oh, shoot, now I have to find him. Oh, where did he go? There he is. Ah, ha, ha. <laughs> so, and then we can do a fastest, which is a quality setting for our occlusion. And we can also set it to medium. And we can see that he is sort of being occluded there. And then the best quality right there. And that is our hide and seek. So if I, oh, if I tap them again, okay, where'd you go? Where did, uh, where'd you go? Okay, he's somewhere. He's, he's somewhere. <laughs> so that is occlusion, hide and seek. And we'll do that there. And that is the technical aspect of this portion of the uh, workshop there. You can take it away, Steph. Woo, awesome. Just waiting for your green light there. <laughs> well, thank you again, Nikisa. Always a pleasure. Love the puns. Really appreciated it. Um, again, if you guys have any questions here in the audience, toss them into the questions tab. I'm going to take five minutes to wrap this up and then we'll invite Nikisa back on or you can stick around Nikisa. Uh, we'll, we'll be answering those questions that you have uh, left us in the questions tab. But let me share my screen here as well just so I can wrap this up together. Oh la la, is it flickering for you guys too? Let me just stop this. Maybe it was just me. Awesome. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, Nikisa, thank you again. Pleasure and an honor to have you leading these workshops. Thank you so much. Um, so, I mean, no matter what your interest is, guys, I know we flew through this content quite quickly. We would love to have you with us in our courses, in more future workshops that we're hosting. Uh, before I do continue on, though, I'm going to toss in a poll here. On a scale of 0 to 10, how likely are you to recommend this workshop to other people? Zero being, I'll never tell anyone about it. 10 being, I enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Please let us know. It helps us uh, continue hosting these workshops, figuring out whether or not we should host more AR occlusion ones. Uh, really just gives us uh, a good insight as to how we're doing, whether or not we should continue with these workshops or not. So your responses would be appreciated. But whether your interest is in um, a personal interest, bring this back to work, upskilling yourself or maybe changing careers. Again, we would love to have you with us or just to chat with you about what you're looking to do. Uh, we had Mike Oaks take our course uh, a while back. He just recently landed a job with Unity here in Calgary. I Today, I spoke with another one of our alumni from July. She had also been accepted to Unity starting in January in New York. But Jennifer Swan as well took our course, created a project alongside our instructors, and now she's been accepted into Oculus's Launchpad program using the project she created with us, received a $30,000 grant to continue her work uh, after the Circus Stream course. And then others have gone on to create their own businesses. You know, Matt Delalo is a perfect example of this, took our course and later on started his own company, Lucky VR, working with VR and AR technologies. But you know, most of these people have gone through our XR development with Unity course. Now this is all live and online, uh, over 10 weeks, four hours per week, three hours in class, two one and a half hour sessions, and then a one hour private weekly one-on-one -on -one session to help build your own ideas, projects, and interests to add to your portfolio or a prototype that you can continue working on. Our next course is set on February 15th. The full price of it is $39.50. 
uh, and it covers C sharp fundamentals using Unity. Again, four hours of instruction to commit to per week and one on one support on your own projects. Now, there's no experience required for this course, so newbies have no fear. We welcome everyone from all walks of life. Now, if you're saying, Steph, you know, I'm, I'm already familiar with Unity, I've, I've got the C sharp stuff nailed down, I have something in mind, or I'm already working on a project that I need to accelerate and really polish up. Well, our eight week XR project accelerator course might be the one for you. Now, this one is eight weeks long, a portfolio course really designed to help touch up, polish some projects that you've created or had in mind. It's six hours of instruction per week, three hours in class, three private sessions each week to help accelerate and advance those projects of yours. Uh, with office hours, a certification provided, and again, really designed for those who are already familiar with this stuff, looking to take their projects to the next level. The next course is on January 5th. The full price is $44.50, uh, but for all of these courses, the XR Development and the XR Project Accelerator, we have three-month payment plans, six-month payment plans, and 12-month payment plans to help, you know, uh, be as flexible as possible with those who might have an interest in these. Now, if you've got a group of people, if you're working on a team looking to learn more about VRAR, create a proof of concept, something to bring back to work, we do have team training opportunities as well. These can be private, custom schedules based on your calendars and schedules, content from our co catalog or something specific that you want to learn about. Well, we'd be more than happy to have your team with us privately helping you advance and accelerate your skills and projects for work. Now, again, we have a bunch of individual courses that might be tailored to something that you're interested in from three weeks long to six weeks, weeks long, part time, two classes a week and open office hours to meet with our team outside of those class sessions from C sharp design the quest and HoloLens. We've got these four covered for those specific interests. So if you have any questions, give us a shout. Feel free to reach out to myself, to Kyle or Vlad that you may have seen here in the chat. I'd be more than happy to help and they would be also uh, more than happy to support you, offer some insight any way they can. But I would like to invite Nikisa back on here. I think her cam is just off, so she just needs to turn her cam on. But uh, with that, you know, let's get into the, the questions here. So I'm gonna see if I can get both of us on here. Oh, oh, perfect. Wonderful, wonderful. So I'm going to arrange this by date, uh, as in when we had the questions submitted. So this one's from, from my man, Jack. And Jack was asking, what's your favorite AR framework, Nick? He says, is it AR Kit or AR Core? You got a preference? Oh, that's so hard. Um... If you are making anything for iOS, you will need ARKit. Now, ARKit has some really, really neat things like object detection or object recognition mm -hmm. and even like body tracking itself. So ARKit is really, really fun to play around with. Now, me having a Windows uh, PC and an Android phone, I find AR Core to be much easier for me to work with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, why not both? <laughs> Perfect. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm slowly moving my way. I got a PC, moved away from the Mac. I'm going to get an Android as well. What? So buy Apple. Some would call that <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and then, um, you know, I'll, I'll toss one here from Danny, and hopefully we can figure out at what point he asked this question. But he's asking, why do we not need the multi-threaded? And I assume this was at ah. one point you were covering. Yes, yes. So some Android phones do not have like multi-threaded rendering capabilities, although I believe newer phones have that capability. Um, hey, I did not choose one over the other. I said both. Anyways, so multi-threaded rendering um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, is not capable on some processors, but I think on the newer phones, like I th believe my phone is actually capable of multi-threaded rendering, so I didn't necessarily have to uncheck that. Um, you can certainly have multi-threaded rendering on newer phones like the Samsung S20 
plus, which I re highly, highly recommend because that's one I have. <laughs> I'm going to wait until the new year. If they release a new one in January, I'm hopping on it. But since we're on the topic of mobile phones and stuff, Jack had another question here. Um, and so you have an Android, maybe you don't know much about the iPhone, but what are your thoughts on the uh, iPhone LiDAR sensors? Tell oh. us a little bit about that. Oh, okay. So this is like super, super cool. And this is certainly going to take occlusion and like those immersive experiences on your phone to like the next level. And there's like so many things that you could do. You could do like terrain recognition. You could do like um, maybe even like specific heat maps where like you're analyzing uh, where people have uh, walked on a pathway and, and you really want to know like AR uh, heads up display is like which path is the thing that people choose like uh, let's say for example has anyone played mirror's edge no not me <sighs> Okay, so Mirror's Edge is a great um, parkour game, and they have this thing called Runner's Vision, where it's just like, I know, right? Uh, where it's just like, um, uh, Runner's Vision is like heads up displays of suggestions about which path that would be great to take uh, for your little parkour point A to point B line uh, pathway to choose. Um, so imagine that and using your LiDAR sensor to know that like, this is probably a best path for you to take on your phone and connect that with like your, your Google or like your, your maps API or like even Mapbox. like iPhone 12 with pro LiDAR. Absolutely go all the way. Yeah. I thought it was cool too. That's what I was like, no, nah, I'm going to move away from my phone, but they just got this. I know. I know they're, they're getting up there. They're <laughs> neck and neck. <laughs> Now we have a question here from Daphne and Daphne was wondering if she or we want to change a scene and continue with the app like a level two, et cetera, should we go with the same manager or reinstantiate? Is there anything to take into consideration? Change a scene and continue. Um, usually with managers, you would have a don't destroy on load. So you only want one instance uh, you, you, uh, well, one instance of a manager at a time. That's um, that's why the singleton pattern exists. So you have one manager that contains all the information that you want to transfer from scene to scene. Now there are other ways that you can do this, like an observer pattern or, or other game development patterns that you can use that are better than the singleton instance. Because using a singleton pattern does have its cons, uh, which is something that you can dive into a little bit later on. Like the XR accelerator. <laughs> I'll reach out to Daphne. Um, let's see what else we got here. We've got uh, Senor Danny. Danny, how can one get the emulator to see the phone on laptop? Thanks. <laughs> ah, okay. So the thing that I have installed is called A Power Mirror. Um, <laughs> A Power Mirror is also the same one that Jerry has. Uh, he's the one that recommended it to me too, and it works really well. It works for iOS and Android, where you can mirror your phone either by USB or Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And we got here from uh, Ross Brown. Ross is asking Was a depth camera required for this demo? Yes. Absolutely. Occlusion in AR can only happen if you have a depth camera on your phone. Mm -hmm. Cool. Perfect. That's good to know for, for myself as well. Then uh, Lee Walker uh, saying the setup was pretty quick. Quick. Is there a checklist to make sure you get all the settings right? Yes. Uh, we can absolutely provide a checklist for you to get your, uh, your setup there. Um, there are also... Uh, I believe Unity settings. I believe Unity's website has like a, a mobile tutorial. Um, there's there's many ways that you can get a checklist, and mm -hmm. we'll provide with them for you guys after this workshop too. Yeah, we got you, Lee. We got you. Yeah. Then uh, our man, Mr. Jumo, is there a difference of features between ARKit and AR Core apart from the obvious device support? Oh, there is. <laughs> uh, some of them I, I've already mentioned. Um, AR Core um, does have, I would say that it does have a better depth API. Um, and there's like an overview on the Android um, AR Core website. Uh, and there's like some other, other things like light estimation. 
Um, there is, there's, oh, there's so many different features. Now, with all these different features, there's also like some things that are the same that they've sort of reimagined to be like same, same, but different. <laughs> um, which are like your obvious AR capabilities, like uh, ray casting or image recognition, that sort of thing. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. And then Nikita, Nikita and Nikisa. <laughs> High five. High five. <laughs> nice. Is there a way to develop AR iOS apps with a Windows laptop or a PC, I guess? <clears throat> no. <laughs> yeah. If you are developing for an iOS device, unfortunately, you do need a Mac. You need a MacBook because mm -hmm. you need that uh, Xcode. And then there was, how did it work? It was like, if you have a PC, you can build for like Android phones, but if you have a Mac, you can do for both iOS and Android. Was it something yes. like that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. That makes sense. Um, so, so if you're primarily going to be a mobile app developer, and not doing anything in VR, um, you might want to go with a MacBook, mm -hmm. like a good, a good MacBook, not something from like 2013. <laughs> right, right, right. Interesting. Very interesting. I know, David. I know. And like, but if like, if you want to expand your your horizons to like all of XR, you will need a PC. Mm -hmm. uh, like a real good beefy PC that has like NVIDIA graphics card that's like series 3000 and it's just like real nice. <laughs> and then we've got uh, Eric. Eric with a question here. Did you guys already work with media facades? Like can you imagine an app that does kind of visual mapping on buildings? So Oh, a, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's uh, there's probably like a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can, <laughs> uh, I'll answer that question later. Um, so imagine an app that does visual mapping on buildings. Yes, you can absolutely overlay digital objects over real world objects using either a mobile phone or like a lovely device called a HoloLens, which is my <laughs> personal favorite. Um, <laughs> And there is also a third kind, if you are willing to get a little weird with me here. It's called projection mapping, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Uh, yes, the HoloLens ones does count. Uh, so there's a number of ways that you can overlay visuals on real world buildings. And with that, you also probably, you, you, you need some sort of geolocation marking. So right. you actually know where, where your building is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So on the topic of the HoloLens, we have a question here from Mr. Kyle Brown. How much mm. the experience do you have with the HoloLens too? If this was for me, not much. I've tried it on, Kyle. Played around oh. with it, super cool. But Nikisa, what, what about you? Ah, I, I have quite a bit of experience with the HoloLens too. It's, uh, it's the thing that I just love working with. And um, there is the upcoming HoloLens 2 course that CircuitStream offers that uh, I've developed with in conjunction with uh with eric here who worked on the hololens team mm -hmm. actually making the device itself so that yes david that hummingbird experience eric was the designer on that and so eric and i have made uh this hololens course uh for circuit stream here and it's all about the fundamentals and doing some some cool stuff uh in on the hololens right perfect yeah um and then uh, that's it for the questions tab, but David's got a <laughs> question here for you. David, case. man. What's what's behind you? What's uh, what you working what's, what on? What am I building? What oh, building? That's a, that is going to be a lovely little um, gaming, like a uh, couch gaming PC. And so it's, uh, it's smaller. It's It has those little handles that I've installed. I drilled into using my nifty little Dremel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's got, it's a little ITX uh, little board there with a PC, uh, M.2 PCIe card. <laughs> Not for the dog, no. <laughs> uh, but who, who has purchased something that came out yesterday that was real important for the gaming world? <gasps> Cyberpunk. <gasps> yes. Close Time though. for a vacation. Close there. <laughs> <laughs> Cyberpunk, what is it, 2077? New game. It took yeah. like 
12 years to create or something like that. Yeah. From the makers of The Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. So you know it's going to be it out. Check it out. But um, hey, I believe those were all of the questions in the questions tab. It looks like the chat as well. Evan Anderson mm -hmm. bought it yesterday, so maybe we'll get some gaming going on together here. But uh, with that, you know, I do want to wrap things up here. Don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on another Circus Stream workshop and webinar. Check out next week's workshop. This one, I believe, is going to be UX for XR. A very interesting one. It's going to be hosted by our colleague, Vlad, alongside a special guest. So super excited to see that one. I think it's on Tuesday. So feel free to check it out. Register that, that one. If you can't attend, you will get the, the recording either way. Um, but if you have any further questions about AR, about occlusions, <laughs> what we do here at Circuit Stream. You guys want another joke? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> what do you call a polar bear in a jungle? What? Lost. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I should have had that one. <laughs> <laughs> but there, David, we got uh, we got some puns then. <laughs> but uh, with that, again, thank you everyone for for tuning in and joining us on a Circus Stream workshop. Check out the workshop next week. Uh, we do have a holiday special going on right now, uh, so down toss in the link there or check out our website uh, to see what kind of specials we're offering with our courses here. But. Uh, as always, the whole team is here to help you out with anything that we, we can help you with. Uh, feel free to reach out to myself, to Nikisa, Kyle, or Vlad backstage, even Dayon. But thank you all for, for, for joining us for this workshop and webinar. <laughs> Eric, thank you. And uh, yeah, no, thanks again. Have a wonderful Thursday, maybe even Friday, and, and a great weekend if we don't connect with, with each other. Take care, everyone. See you guys.